Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Before we upgrade to Exchange 2010, our environment might look like this. This is a pretty standard, simple setup where we've got an external DNS server that hosts our external DNS records like our MX records and our host records for our domain. And then we have external users that access Exchange in their mailboxes with things like Outlook Web Access and Outlook Anywhere. And then we have our internal network with our firewall and a DMZ or perimeter network. In our DMZ, we have our Edge Transport server. In our example, it's called Edge 2007. So it's an Exchange 2007 Edge Transport server. And then inside of our network, we have an Exchange server that's Exchange 2007, and it has the Hub Transport, Client Access server, and Mailbox server roles on it. And then we have internal DNS servers that are normally our domain controllers, and our internal users that will access their mailbox with Outlook, Outlook Web Access. And then during our upgrade to Exchange 2010, we're most likely going to have a, co a period of time where Exchange 2007 and Exchange 2010 are coexisting, meaning they're both up and running in our organization. And this is how it will look. The external part is the same, but in the DMZ we'll have Edge 01, which will be our Exchange 2010 Edge Transport Server, and then Edge 2007, which was our existing Edge Transport Server that's Exchange 2007. And down here inside our network we'll have Exchange 01, which is going to be our Exchange 2010 Hub Transport Client Access Server and Mailbox Server, and here's our existing Exchange 2007 Hub Transport Client Access Server and Mailbox Server. And how it will, it will work while we're coexisting with Exchange 2007 and Exchange 2010 is that mail from other mail servers will actually be able to go to either Edge Transport Server. And we can configure this with our MX records so that mail will flow through Exchange 01 or Exchange 2007 down to either hub transport server, whether it be Exchange 2010 or Exchange 2007, and vice versa. So mail going out to the internet will go from a hub transport server, either Exchange 2007 or Exchange 01, out to either edge transport servers, and then the edge transport servers will send it out to the internet. Outlook clients internal to the network will actually connect to whatever client access server they have their mailbox on. So if they're going to connect to Exchange 2007, then their mailbox is going to be on Exchange 2007. If their mailbox is on Exchange 2010, they'll connect to the client access server on Exchange 2010. But for things like Outlook Web Access or ActiveSync, we're actually going to set up a legacy domain so that the clients, whether they be internal or external, we'll be able to use the same domain name. In our example, it's going to be mail.itdvds.com. And we're going to connect to our Exchange 2010 client access server. And we, when we configure our legacy URL, it's going to be legacy.itdvds.com. When the client connects to our client access server on Exchange 2010, it will actually redirect them to Exchange 2007 if that's where their mailbox is at. If it's on Exchange 2010, then it will keep them there or redirect them to the appropriate Exchange 2010 mailbox. And it will be a single sign-on process, so it will actually be seamless to the users. They won't even realize probably that they're actually being redirected to legacy.itdvds.com while their mailbox is still on Exchange 2007. And we do need to keep our hub transport and client access server roles for Exchange 2007 up and running as long as we have mailboxes on our Exchange 2007 server. So we're actually not going to remove these until the very end when we moved over all of our mailboxes to Exchange 2010. And then finally, after the upgrade, it's going to look very similar that it did to when we had just Exchange 2007, except everything's going to be Exchange 2010. That's kind of the easy part about upgrading from Exchange 2007 to Exchange 2010 as opposed to upgrading from Exchange 2003 is that the roles stayed the same with Exchange 2010. So we're going to have our Edge Transport server in our DMZ and then our Exchange server that has our Hub Transport Client Access server and Mailbox role in our network.